Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Rush Green with myself, Oli Aldis, and I am joined by an iconic figure at West Ham, Mark Phillips. Mark, how are we doing tonight? Very well indeed. I'm proud to be announced as an iconic figure. I've never been announced that in my life. <laughs> well, from from what I've heard, uh, obviously you're a, you're a main staple at this club, so uh, it's great to be joined alongside you in a in what seems to be and what is technically a, a London derby at this level. So it should work out to be a fairly good fixture. What are your opinions going on to this game and what's the research you've done? Of course, as a, someone associated with West Ham, what are you aware of that Chelsea obviously possess at this uh, under 21 level? Chelsea always have quality players but throughout the age groups. I mean, they, they gather players as the age groups go up and they look at the teams, they might take players from lesser category clubs, so they'll always have quality, quality players. Even not so, we're going to be more local than they will be. They tend to get players from you know, further afield and around Europe sort of stuff. So, so you, under 18s, under 21s, you'll never have an easy game with Chelsea. It'll be a tough game. 
indeed, indeed. From well, from the table, obviously, the table we can say doesn't lie. They currently are sat in 12th, West Ham in second. Clearly, throughout the season, teams that can have their younger players picked, especially the ones that perform, can go into the senior sides, which can theoretically weaken those under 21 sides. Do you think that's a case of what's happened here, or do you think the table uh, represents a fair justice of, of, of their quality in that age group? I don't actually know what's happened with Chelsea while they're so far, far down the league. I'm, I'm not really sure. But as you said, sometimes you know, they're playing people up to test players. They're looking for individuals. You know, there's obviously been 18s playing up in the 21s. I don't know if you're aware, Chelsea had a Youth Cup game last night. They beat Crystal Palace 2-1. So I don't know how many players in that 18s team normally play in the 21s. I'm not really sure on the Chelsea shit up. As I've said on numerous occasions when I've been the co-commentator, I'm a biased West Ham commentator and that's all I really am concerned with. Well, it's a good job. This is for the West Ham YouTube channel and the teams <laughs> are on their way out on the green at Ross Green. West Ham United versus Chelsea. West Ham currently positioned in second, chasing Tottenham at the top. Chelsea in a more unglamorous 12th in the league, but both sides on their way for this Friday night fixture. So, so we will start with the home side for you, Mark. It's two changes since the 3-0 win against Dynamo Zagreb. Of course, in goal, back in the spot is Jacob Knightbridge. Junior Robinson, Regan Clayton comes in for Michael Forbes. Lewis Orford, Captain Kalen Casey, Louise Yao, Sean Moore, Patrick Kelly. Divin Mubama comes back in the side. This is his first showing in the Premier League 2 since the end of September. That was a 3-3 draw against Southampton here at Rush Green. Obviously, he's been enjoying some time with the senior squad and now finds himself in the PL2 this evening. As is George Earthy back out on the green after he scored two weeks ago against Stoke City and Oliver Scarles. Substitutes Kamari Swaya back on the bench as Divin Mubama enters the side. Mason Terry, Sean Tarima, Josh Briggs and Dan Rigg. The away side, it's four changes since their 3-3 draw at Kings Meadow against Leeds. Back in goal is Teddy Sharman Lowe, Brody Hughes, the captain, Billy G. In comes Dylan Williams, Zach Sturge, Sam Raksaki, Zane Silcott Dubery, Jimmy Turanian, Ronnie Stutter, Leo Castledine, and in the side, leading the line, it seems. David Washington substitutes for the away team. Richard Elise, Ted Kurd, Ollie Harrison, Frankie Runham, and Du Juan Richards, who actually, in fact, played a handful of minutes last night in that Youth Cup game against Crystal Palace. He finds himself on the bench. Both sides just about to start. Mark. Uh, the, on, the only one I really know in Chelsea's side is number nine, Ronnie Stutter, because Ronnie was here till he was. I think it was 13, 14, and then Chelsea came in for Ronnie and he, and he went across London you know, to Chelsea. So I know Ronnie reasonably well. He's, he's got great movement, great pace. He's playing against a lot of his old friends I and mean, he's really close with George Urphy and Caleb Casey. So he, he'd be out to, to prove a point to West Ham United, I should think. So he's, he's a danger, you have to watch out for Ronnie. Was that much of a surprise when Ronnie left to go to the other end of London? Yeah, it was, but it, the, the, these things happen rather like at Premier League level. You know, they, let's not kid ourselves. Chelsea have got more money than us. Manchester City have got more money than us. And they come in, if they come in, there's, you know, it's very hard to hang on to your players. Money turns players' heads at under 14 level and at first team level. So, you know, we do all we can to keep them, but money is sometimes the overriding factor, unfortunately. Of course, well, he's one player that, like Mark said, will be playing against his former side, a pacey and direct striker. Of course, only joined the minute after his time in the under 14s. I mean, to counteract that, we've got Oli Skulls on our side, who Chelsea made a mistake in my eyes of releasing. So Oli Skulls will have a point to prove against Chelsea. So we've got that to counteract. And, and Oli Skulls, you know, I am biased, but he's a fantastic player. He's featured a couple of times on the bench 
this season. Can you see him becoming a mainstay in the senior side towards the end of the season or maybe at the birth of the next? Well, he's the one player at the moment, actually this week, who is training you know, regularly with the first team. So, you know, the first that, that's your first port of call to get over there, train with the first team, impress the, you know, the first team coaching staff, and then you maybe get yourself on the bench and then you get yourself on the pitch. You don't just go from there to there quickly. So that, that's how it works, really. So he's, he's doing well, Ollie, he? doing well. Of course, Divin Mubama leading the line for West Ham this evening. He's played a hand or featured in some senior squads. What do you make of him and his entrance back into the PL2 for this evening? I mean, it's nice to see him. I think it was, um, it was his choice to come and want to play the game. You know, I mean? and, and you know, if you, you don't just be training all the time, you want you want to be playing games. I think for the first team, he needs a goal. He needs a goal. It can be a lucky tapping from half a yard. It can be a 30-yard screamer. But he needs a goal just to settle himself down because he's playing a little bit anxiously for me for the first team. You know, but I think I think a goal will settle himself down. Even a goal tonight is not going to harm his chances, are they? I, mean, I haven't looked in the stand, but there's probably some first-team staff watching from the stand. I'd have thought so, anyway. Certainly, so it'll give them a good taste and hopefully a confidence booster for Mabama, who has barely played Premier League 2 action. So to have that drop down to the under-21s could be that resurgence and see that resurgence of confidence injected into their number nine this evening as he gets us off underway under the lights here as West Ham play from right to left already they're looking on the front foot here is Skulls as he slides in but Castle Dine for Chelsea just plays it out to this right hand side Zane Silcott Dubery passing it back to the keeper back in between the sticks Teddy Sharman low it's Louise out almost chases that and it's played back to Knightbridge of course Knightbridge coming back into the side mark is he he's, I've noticed that he plays the, ma the majority of Premier League two games is that Steve Potts's pre preference to switch the goalkeepers between competitions of course Anang was there against Dynamo Zagreb yeah I mean, I mean if, if there isn't a first team game if there is a first team game Joe Anang tends to be the third keeper with the first team so he wouldn't be playing tonight just in case he got a knock or anything like that so then jacob will be you know jacob is our regular one with mason terry on the bench sort of stuff like it's, it's not steve's choice it's not first team choice really oh so there's brody hughes as they're just playing around the back mubama chasing the chelsea shot stopper and that's a good cut out there by the number eight patrick kelly he tries to feed a ball in. Instead, a corner will be the outcome, says referee Kirsty Doyle. It was nice to see Chelsea trying to play at the back, which we envisaged earlier. And we, we sort of, I wouldn't say we set a trap, but as soon as we was there, we, you know, we pressed really high and won the ball in the final third, which is not a plan of ours. It's how we play in every game. But we like Chelsea to think they're going to play out and we could nick it high and maybe capitalise on that. Like Chelsea are playing into your hands almost, if you like, early on here. Well, I don't understand as arrogant as that, but no. salt, salt. Potentially. <laughs> early signs, suggests Mark. <laughs> now West Ham have a chance on that far side. Players lurking towards that back post, and that's where the ball will head. But it's Leo Castledine who flicks it away. Another corner, this time on the near side. Leo Castledine's a player. <laughs> We've played at, uh, seems to be seen to be at Chelsea for forever he's been you know played for the under 18s when he was an under 16 several times plays for 21 he's always dependable for Chelsea Castle Dine good player of course a promising 18 year old joined from Wimbledon after his spell at the under 15s and that's almost creeping in it's almost kept alive cut out there quickly as Silcott Dubry plays it out to this right hand side Chelsea with a spring in their step Skulls will get a flick on Bring the ball forward. Here is Earthy. But Chelsea find themselves on the ball in the West Ham half, but Mabama manages to get the better of their number eight, Jimmy Turinian. Work there from Earthy in a tight area. Just got a little knock there on his left foot, it seemed. Chelsea in their back in the West Ham half. Chelsea continuing to enjoy playing out from the back. Of course, here is Silcott Dubry who finds himself on the right-hand side this evening. Cleared away by Clayton, who obviously came in. 
Robinson down that right. We know how dangerous he can be down that right hand side. I'm sure you know, Mark. Yeah, yeah I think the best part of Junior's game is going forward. I'm not saying he can't defend, but as a right wing back, it's going forward is the key. But here come Chelsea with their first real chance at getting bodies forward in that West Ham half. Will be a throw that was short lived as to Ryan and tried to play it out to that left hand side. What do you make of Jimmy Turinen? Do you know much of him, Mark, the number eight for Chelsea? They, I know they think highly of him. I, I don't know, I've not seen him many times myself, but that, they like him. He, was in, he, he drove forward work very well there at pace, but I'm delighted to say it was an, a misplaced pass. A misplaced pass, that cut short any potential Chelsea joy, but can they get some more? And offside is the verdict. Skulls driving down that left. He's got Earthy to the left of him, but instead he'll play it to his right. Advantage is the outcome. Here is Castle Dine. So he assesses his options and sprays one out or tries to it. David Washington. That's another player that Chelsea, West Ham, in fact, may need to look out for. 18 years old, broke out in his native South America after he signed from Santos. Made a, his debut for Santos last year, of course, in their relegation campaign in the Brazil First Division. I must confess, he's a player I know nothing about. <laughs> it's a good job I've got some notes on him there, Mark, for us to I, discuss. I, I don't watch many Santos home games, if I'm honest. I can't say I do either, but it's a note worthy of mentioning. Of course, he's used to first-team football and now finds himself in the academy at Chelsea. West Ham playing out from left to right. Kaelin Casey. What do you make of Kaelin Casey, Mark? Of course, captaining the side. I can only speak really, really highly of Caleb Casey as a footballer and as a person. Tonight, nothing really to do with football. I mentioned that the, the boots he's got on, they're the new Adidas Predators that I really liked. And he presented me with a pair before the game in a box, which is very, very nice of him. So uh, even if he was having a bad game, I wouldn't say he was after that incident. No, he's a great, he's a, he's a great lad, great leader, fantastic defender, and he's very, he's a threat. I mean, if you, you see the first one, he got on the end of that. He, he wasn't going in the goal, but he's always a threat at the back stick. He really is. And thanks for the boots, Kaelin. Nice to know how <laughs> generous your skipper is, Kaelin Casey. <laughs> Fair play there. Oh, I'm, I'm believe, I'm, I, I, as, as I say, I've, I've never asked for a pair of, pair of boots in the last 10 years. A man of my age doesn't need a pair of football boots, you silly old fool. But uh, I did say they were nice boots, and they give me a box tonight with the boots. They, they'll see my... Uh, coaching playing career out if you look at them as if playing we have staff games on a friday morning and i'll be using them in staff games i was <laughs> going to ask when do you think you'll next be using them but oh, i'm well, glad they will be used Mark. I, I played in the staff game this morning we got we got beat eight six actually but i played in the game <laughs> i'll pass seven kickoff at chab relief if anyone's interested Half seven kick at 7 30 in the morning that's, that's how dedicated I'm we are and early. <laughs> that's, Mark, that's how de dedicated we are yeah I mean, we, had, we, we had some ex Kenny Brown played, Zavon Irons, we some ex professionals there. Yeah? Good to see that you've all still got it, don't you think? Well, you wouldn't be saying that if you watched it, but we're, we're, we're all keen anyway. We're all keen to get out there. Well, West Ham, in the meantime, have an opportunity to put a ball in on that far side. Vertical line of players just on the edge of the area as Mubama makes a darting run there. He was lurking, but. A blue shirt gets there first. As there is a the man, Kalen Casey, the football boot giver. <laughs> Just losing it out there, but Chelsea bring bodies forward through their number seven, Silcott Dubry. Turinian needing a lovely ball. This time it wasn't misplaced, and that's a lovely inverted run. He couldn't quite execute that. Dylan Williams, West Ham. Win it back, Mabama holding it up nicely. That's a loose ball. Finds its way all the way back to Brody Hughes. The game seems to have settled down more into a pattern now. It was all over the place to start with, really, but. Frantic beginning. Yes, very much so. 
Uh, West Ham looked lively in the first couple of minutes, but that often happens in these types of games where it's such an energetic start, you then start to get teams realistically sussing one another out as it dies down. That's what Chelsea are doing, not favouring the playing out from the back method. Maybe they heard your words, Mark, and don't want to play <laughs> potentially into West Ham's hands. I think that's Chelsea's philosophy. It's the way they play, it's the way they like to play. And, 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 I quite like it, but there is times, you, you know, it's risk and reward, it is a risk. I mean, you can play it from the back as well, as, as we're sort of threatening to do now, but a bit of a game of chess at the moment with Jacob. Absolutely, is opting to go to that right-hand side. Robinson, as he just sustained an injury, back up with a spring in his step as he has to chase the Chelsea wide player, just play back to, to Ryan. And he'll feed another one in with his left, unable to execute that. Since, since you mentioned him and he, he made that misplaced pass, he's made a couple of very, you know, he, he really has changed the play from left to right and right to left. He's, he's a good good passing midfielder, actually. He's a tall figure in that midfield role as well. You can spot him. Of course, you central midfielders for West Ham aren't necessarily maybe the, the tallest in frame. Of course, Patrick Kelly... A very good player, very silky player, of course, but Tyrannon certainly dominates the heights in the in the midfield. Yeah, Chelsea seems to have got a little bit of a foothold in the game, actually. I mean, uh, Lewis Alford will uh, match him for height and, and, and size. I haven't seen Lewis actually ca come up against him yet. This is Chelsea's sort of you know, first bit of them getting hold of the game a little bit now. The game's been played in our half. A bit too much of my liking. It looked like it was cut out, but West Ham's earthy, just tried to win it back. Chelsea continuing to dominate the ball. Castledine just touch and go there. Silcott Dubry, it's a good pass into Washington. Silcott Dubry picks it up and bursts into the box, threads it across the face of goal, and cleared away commandingly by Casey as Mbama fetches in the centre circle. He was brought down, but play carries on in West Ham's favour with Skulls making the run. Earthy to his left. Feeds it in first time with his left. A brilliant opportunity falling to Sean Moore as he was just unable to steer that into the goal. Fantastic cross from George. Funny enough, we've done a bit of work on, on that yesterday at training and Sean Moore headed a couple of fantastic finishing, which is, I wouldn't say he heading his, his main prowess of his game. When it went to me, I'll see it with him. I fancy him to score, actually. Very promising, but just was unable to find the back of the net there. It felt like it could have been a clear cut opportunity. Let off for Chelsea. That's the first real shot opportunity we've seen of the game. 11 and a half minutes gone. Washington, who's predominantly a striker, is like he's favouring this. Right hand side. Yeah, he's playing from the right. Ronnie Stutt has been the one who's more central, he hasn't really had a kick of the game yet, Ronnie, but he's been central. And they're playing with three up top. Well, if you look at them now, it looks like the three, doesn't it? Well, a lot of players at this level, of course, like to can be very versatile. I find that when you're looking at up these clubs and these teams, so many players can play an array of positions, it feels. Of course, they all have their predominant one that they favour, but a lot of players sometimes like to play up and down the flank. He's a good example of that, Castle Dine, he, he, he's played, in, played against him a lot, and he, he, he pops up in various positions. Put that down nicely as he continues his run to that right-hand side. He's up against Skulls, but he manages to get room to whip it in. Washington unable to keep it under his spell, but Mabama will hold it up once again. So far, Mabama's hold-up play has been sound for West Ham this evening, managed to find the wide players when needed. He's had a chance. Luizzi out, of course. How do you make of his progress since he signed from Sao Paulo just over a year ago? I, th I think, I mean, physically he's very imposing at this level, you know. He's tough as they come. He's very dominant in the air. He's a, he's, he's a better footballer than he's given credit for. He's a better player than people think. They think he's just a defender. He can play a bit. And he's another one from set pieces who's a threat as well. Of course he... And his, his English is improving day by day. 
Dangerous ball in as Casey was there. It looked like Washington could have been a favourite to get on the end of that ball played in from Brody Hughes, but West Ham come forward. As Louise Al, like you're saying, now have, has an eye for goal. Yeah, yeah. Three this season. I wouldn't say an open play, but from some from set pieces, him and Caleb, you know, are a threat at near and far posts. This is when George is normally at his best. He's in a pocket of space. I'll kill him now, and then we'll, we'll make a misplaced pass. But that's when normally he makes things happen. Earthy just involved in that as it now finds its way to Patrick Kelly. Great run. Just showed a little bit too much of that there in the Chelsea penalty area, and Zach Sturgill clear. But just before that, it was a lovely passenger play down this left, and Earthy was involved from retrieving the ball from Orford, feeding it into Skulls. What a player he is. As I say, though, that's when George is at his best. He's in a little pocket of space. He's always looking for the overlap to, to feed Ollie in, or he can go the other way. You know, he, I mean, both teams, is, which is often the way at this level, in transition, when, as soon as you regain the ball, their team's more open. Well, in the meantime, the Barmer just getting on the end of it, unable to execute that with his left foot, which was stuck out to get on the end of that Robinson cross. Junior Robinson, like you said, he's got the pace and he's great in the attack, but also he knows how to put a ball in, doesn't he? His crossing ability is fantastic. We've caused him a bit of problems with two or three crosses we put in. We've got chances from the end of it. I don't think they're defending crosses that well, so that, that could be our way in. This group, I mean, our, our group here, predominantly the Youth Cup winners from last year, apart from Lewis Au and, 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 and Junior and a few others, but they, they tend to find a way. They'll, they'll get into the game, they'll find a way. They'll work, even without the coaches telling them, they'll work the other team out, work how we can get in behind them. Showing signs of footballing intelligence, which is so much of what the game, it feels like football intelligence is even more necessary in the game now. It sounds like a given, but in terms of being able to work out players, where to stand on the pitch and where, it's not just position-based, which is why you see the versatility of players, but in the meantime, Chelsea bringing it forward through David Washington. It will I, be a I, goal kick. I have to honestly say that was a misplaced foul from my boot giver, Caleb Casey, there. He didn't, didn't see the picture and, and give it to them. Yeah, football intelligence, you might even say that they, they've had some good coaching along the way. I don't know where that's come from, but they, they might have had some coaching at some of the staff at West Ham. Especially at the, the youth levels, at under-19. Uh, modesty for puts me to mention it. But modesty no. made from the individual to my left who happens <laughs> to be a man that works in football coaching. Mark Phillips, Kaelin Casey, the boot giver, just passing it out to Robinson. He's put under pressure, but he was fouled in the meantime. Kirsty Dow. I, I said early doors about us setting traps. I think Chelsea are now setting traps because when we. As soon as we play the second pass, not the first pass, the second pass, it's a trigger for them to go and press us. And a couple of times we might have been a little bit fortunate to get away with it. So I mean, don't mind us playing out from the back, and no problem with it, the ball speed might have to increase. Be there, they're That's waiting it. for the second pass, bang. Leighton, who came on as a substitute against Stoke City two weeks ago in their 3 1 win, starting. This evening, what do you make of Regan Clayton, his performance in a Claret and Blue shirt this season and as a as a youth player? Well, in the Youth Cup, I successfully won in the Youth Cup last year, and I do go on about the Youth Cup like a broken record because I'm really proud of it. Good, as you should be. Regan Clayton played as a left side centre back where he's playing tonight. Although he predominantly is at the club as a left back, he played as a left side centre back. And his communication is the really excellent, fantastic communicator. To the left of Luis Al tonight, occupying that left back role. Chelsea win that free kick. Arsenal Dine applauses that outcome. Brody Hughes on this right hand side. Looks like you're playing a back four tonight, Mark. Of course, in previous games, you may have gone for a back three. Of course, formations can change whether you're in possession or not. But would you say it's a predominantly a back four this evening? No, it's a back three. It's a back three? <laughs> yeah, Regan, what do I know? Regan is actually playing as a left side centre back. Right. Lewis Al centre. Regan to the right. The two wing backs are Junior and Ollie. Ollie Skulls. Tirelessly running up and down that left I mean, the, the, ga the game, as the game moves, sometimes he looks like that might look to be a back four, but we're, we are playing with a back three. Of course, you mentioned this is, a good, this is a good situation. It was a good Great situation. Great tracking back there from the X Hammer, Ronnie Stutter. 
plus. That just shows how good Regan Clayton can be, even though he's playing in that centre-back role. Not the tallest of frames, but certainly a communicator and would say a leader at that back line with Caelan Casey too. Yeah, I refer back to, to the, the head coach with the under-21s, is Steve Potts, who played hundreds of games for West Ham United's first team at centre-back, and he's no bigger than Regan. If you can read the game, if, you know, the first yard's in your head, and that, that's the key to it. First yard's in your head. Good phrase. As West Ham have a goal kick, the rain starts to pour. I'm always telling people the first yards in, in, in your head because I'm so slow. I, I, I wait 10 seconds before I move, so that's probably what, that's why that saying sticks with me. <laughs> Gives you a mental head start. Yeah. The Knightbridge. Skull's in plenty of room on this left-hand side. Knightbridge finds him. Chelsea caught sleeping. Good vision. Good vision Brilliant vision. You. Who'd have thought? You a coach? <laughs> Just what? a commentator, and I could not be a coach, as you know, from my comments mentioned on the back three situation. <laughs> well, I was going to mention the word driver after I said coach, but I'm not really. <laughs> <laughs> he was no. correct. You did, see, you did see that early, actually. You did say that earlier. I think maybe if you look at the conditions, when the, the atrocious blowing into Jake... Jacob's face, maybe that's one of the other reasons he decided to go short. And I suppose when you've got a player in that much room, yeah. you've got to use them, really, is it feels like Chelsea are giving them such an advantage. Are they giving, giving them an advantage here? They're not. They managed to cut it out and win as the rain gets heavier and heavier. West Ham haven't pressured Chelsea in the last moments of the game, but they do so now with Skulls and Earthy linking up on this left-hand side. Nice turn from Earthy. Here's Kelly, he tries to feed it out to that right, but Stutter chasing it back as he feeds it into their number eight to Ryanen. <laughs> Kelly just tracks back there. It's a loose pass, trying to find Castledine. When you mentioned Jacob Knightbridge earlier, I was absolutely amazed because everyone always gets his name wrong and call him Jacob Knightsbridge. You said Knightbridge, I was like, well done to you. Well, I'll be you, lying to no, say no, I've no, always no. called him Knightbridge. Well, uh, most people, I've called, him, <laughs> I've called him Knightsbridge for 12 <laughs> years. <laughs> it doesn't help that it is a place, of course, where you just will be automatically thinking of something of the like. Exactly. Knightsbridge, of course, famously. And, and, and without, without boring you, I was a London taxi driver for 20 years and was regularly being asked to go to Knightsbridge and not Knightbridge. I wonder, it's like a Mandela effect, is there no? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, your perception is just slightly different. But Robinson on that far side as the rain just manages to fall off us a tad. They get it forward. Two on two, really, but Luizzi out. Just using his physical presence to shrug off Stutter. Chelsea have got themselves in quite a few good situations, but I don't remember Jacob actually making a save yet. You think we had two good crosses that we could have capitalised on, but I don't remember Jacob making a save tonight. But yeah. No, he hasn't. He hasn't been made, made to, hasn't been forced to make a save as of yet. So far, sound defending when Chelsea have got bodies forward. They have looked fairly dangerous and managed to get in the box on a couple of occasions. But Kaelin Casey, Regan Clayton, and Louise Owl doing their jobs. I think the only chance, really, or the only chance of this game so far, like you mentioned, was the Kelly header about eight yards out. So far, both sides cancelling one another out. Skulls intercepts that as he seeks off a pass to the run of George Earthy. Three blue shirts around him, but he manages to find Kelly. That's cut out, short-lived. Trying and plays into stutter, just drops deep. Sutter, much of a player that you find in the box, or does he like to drop deep and help out the wide players like Washington? I think a bit of both. He mixes his game up, Ronnie, to be fair. I mean, as I say, his, his main attribute is his pace. Gone a little bit like basketball now, a bit end to end, isn't it? End to end. You have a go, we have a go. Obama, Tyrannian. Brilliant physical presence there as he manages to shrug off the big man in Mubama. I've been, I've been impressed with Chelsea's number eight, to be fair. I think he's got a good all-round midfield game. He, he looks a decent player. 
Got a good left foot on him. An eye for a pass and an eye for a strike, but so far yet to have a go at Knightbridge's goal. Ronnie Hughes feeding it out to that left-hand side, picked up by Castledine on the touchline. Robinson, the closest player to him. It'll make its way to Zach Sturge. Back to Castledine, he fancies his chances. First real shot on goal, doesn't test Knightbridge over the framework. I think lucky for us, the ball took, just took a bubble as he, as, he, as he went to strike it. I mean, I mean, the weather's not the best. Us and the ladies tra both train on this, so the, pit, the pitch surface in February could, could maybe be a bit better than it is, honestly. That is not a slight on the groundsman, because our groundsman at West Ham United are excellent. Just the use of course, just get. the use they get a good yeah use plenty of times and of course the rain can't help and there a slip from Casey giving away a corner as Robinson tried finding his captain to just play it safely but instead they concede a corner it's Chelsea's first corner for some time it's just again another case of Chelsea pressing, coming down on us as soon as we try and come out and, and putting pressure on the man in possession. To be fair to them, they, they, they have done that well. They have done that well. The quick players that they possess up front, Castledine, Stutter and Washington, all very quick players. Here is Silcott Dubry on that far side, whips it in with his right and able to find a blue shirt, but it will fall kindly to Zach Raksaki. Hitting the post, but it's kept alive by Castledine. He plays it back to Trinan. Long shot there with his left, trying to find that far corner. But it's over the framework, never troubling Knightbridge. Just then, Raksaki from distance, Mark. Yeah, I mean, on a night like tonight, it actually didn't come off the surface. It was a, it was a full shot onto the post. but. There's nothing wrong with having a shot from distance. It hits the surface. It's a very difficult night for a goalkeeper, slippery, skiddy. I'd like to think Jacob might have had it covered on. Might be been, been a bit biased towards him. It was a good shot from the kid, actually. It was a good shot. I see that on the yeah. replay at half time. There is a number eight, Tyrrhenian. And number seven, still got Dubry. Just tried to play it quickly and set off a run down that right, but instead it goes all the way back to the Chelsea keeper, Sharman Lowe, and that ends up being a lovely ball into the path of Zach Sturge as Robinson chases him. Castledine moving into the box. It's then whipped in. Scarls is the only player to get something onto it. And Earthy will play it back to the man that cleared it in the first place. Chelsea looking fairly dangerous when they get the ball forward, and... Also, Mark, they, you can see that they, they can play it out from the back, or they try to, but then they, they're not afraid to go direct when needs be. No, they're not. And then they've caused it that, that, that there was a, a simple flick on header and, and, and the lab was in. I think when, when they get forward and they get wide and they put crosses in, I'm not that concerned, because I think we deal with most of the crosses. It's when they play through the middle of us, and they're making passes and threading passes in, that's when they look dangerous. Is that something you anticipated before the game? Yeah, I mean, that's that's always, you know, the Chelsea are clever, they're, 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 that's how they play the game, sort, sort of stuff. I think it's a, we need, we need a foothold in the game because I'd say they're the dominant side, unfortunately, at the moment. This team would normally find a way we've got him. Found a way against Stoke, of course, two weeks ago, that started fairly equal. A few missed chances, but then comfortable victory in the end as you came out 3-1 winners yeah I mean as, as every game of football goals change games Kelly into the path and back again we're, we're to Kelly get the first one. good attack here from West Ham but Skull's unable to wrap his left foot around it the ball goes wayward doesn't trouble the Chelsea back line goal kick no the approach play again is something we've done a lot of work on yesterday getting there and Ollie, you can normally put your ass on him to deliver a decent cross. It, it'd be more disappointed with that than anyone here, I'm honest with you. He knows himself. It was a surprise from Skulls as he usually so effective with that left. Yeah, he's got, he, his it left happens. foot delivery, you know, is probably the best bit of his game, if I'm honest. 
of the last 15 minutes. We haven't been looking to our left that much, have we? We've been looking to our right, so let's see if we can play the game in there after a little bit. Just get a grip on this game, West Ham. 30 minutes gone, just under. Little goalless between the two sides. As Chelsea have had a couple of opportunities at goal in the recent 10 minutes, both fooling their central midfielder, Yimi Tarayanen. We look to our left, but Chelsea are the team in possession, which will frustrate West Ham for the time being. Tarayanen trying to get a flick forward. Kelly will be up there with Mabama. There's a chance here. Robinson puts it in. It's palmed away. Now picked up by Orford. Clayton trying to take the ball away from Washington. And Chelsea have bodies forward here as Castle Dines in a brilliant position to the right of Tarainen. Couldn't quite execute that final ball. We have been saying that he has a left foot on him, but there have been a couple of occasions where he hasn't been able to execute that final pass, which, of course, will be a relief to West Ham. Yeah, he, he does look extremely... Dark. I think he got caught in two minds. I don't know actually what he was doing, if he was going to shoot or chip it or look for the fellow at the back stick. I'm glad to say, but, you know, he, he does drive forward. In, you know, he drives forward into that sort of final third area quite well, the lad. But he's obviously, to get himself in the first team... That's what he's got to work on, the final bit. That's what he's got to work on. His final ball. Castle Dine, of course, was in a brilliant golden position. And if he found him, he had space on the right to yeah. really put pressure on Knightbridge for the first time this evening. As I said earlier, I don't think no one's produced any sort of like football to break the other team down. It's been on the counter, them and us, if I'm honest. They've had, not here, but we're breaking at space on the counter. Good improvisation there from Moore, however. And here's Robinson darting down that right, putting a low ball in. Earthy was lurking, but it was caught on by Dylan G, the captain. Here's Sturge. As he looks up, opts to the direct route, trying to find Stutter beyond their number nine. Only Stutter. Here's Orford. Armour just stationary almost for a bit, setting his options as West Ham now favoured to play it to this left-hand side. Here's Skulls up against Silcott Dobbery. A foul? Oh, calling for a foul. Kirsty Dowell doesn't believe that was the case. Now Chelsea off the ball, trying to find Castledine, but Regan Clayton just heading it into the path of Skulls. player I'm always impressed with, Patrick Kelly, in that midfield role. I feel he's such a silky player, good agile, a very agile player too. What's your opinions on your he number get, eight this he evening? He gets through so much work rate and all. He does a lot. Of, if you're not saying that it's only coaches who know football, but if you watch him, another foul? If, uh, it is a foul that time, Mark. It was a foul the first time. <laughs> uh, he gets through so much off the ball work as well, out of possession, which people don't notice as much. If you're a coach or a manager, he'd be one of your first players on the team sheet because of that work he does. You know, we'd like to, we'd like to see him have more goals in his game as well. But no, he's, as you say, he's a good and he, and he drives well. He's, he's a decent passer of the ball as well, PK. That's what we call him, Patrick. PK. 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 For those of you at home, and if you are at home, of course, do give this live feed. Like, comment your opinions and share the video, of course. Skulls. Taking it inside. So Patrick Kelly, of course, out to Warford. Pass was almost wayward, but Robinson was there. Lovely skill there from Robinson up against Sturge. Two blue shirts onto him as he's forced back. He dealt with it well there, Robinson. Nice turn from Earthy once again. Here is Kelly, now Clayton. Skulls taking it beyond Silcott Dubry. West Ham's best opportunity so far in recent minutes. But Mabama just couldn't quite keep that under his spell. Promising there, Mark. Very good football, very good football. Very, I mean, it may have been one pass 
too many, but their approach play there was excellent. And if you notice, as soon as it goes to the, the keeper, he's looking up now and seeing two on two. This is Chelsea I'm talking about. He's seeing, and he's getting it forward as quick as he can. So they obviously fancy their way in there. Is there, is there two quick boys up front? No, that was great approach play from us. Went side to side, switched it. That was really good. Got our passing game together there. Nice passing Look, between we have just now. Kelly and Clayton there too. Orford. Wait to offload a pass to Robinson. It's more is close to him. He tries to whip it in with his right. Flex off Sturge. Of course, with Junior Robinson, a talented player, what do you think he just needs to improve on to get to that stage in his career to play for the senior side? Uh, to be trustworthy and reliable. A first team manager will look to be trustworthy and reliable. Uh, not maybe he's, he's, he's expensive, he's exciting, he'll create things for us, but you know, he's, he's in the back five, if you want to call it that, as a wing back. Can he defend first? If he can defend anything else on top of that, is a bonus. But I have to say, from when Junior come, when I was under 18s coach at the time, he come from the 16s and he got a scholarship. He's improved year on year. He really has improved. So he's going the right, right way, Junior. It really is. That's when Lewis out there showed his physicality. <laughs> changes his direction there, Patrick Kelly. And with Kelly too, what do you think he could do to get in David Moyes' side? As a midfielder. You know, we want a complete all-round midfielder, maybe looking for more goals. I think that's what he does, because he, he drives into the box. You know, he's, he's more of an assister than a scorer, but I think he gets, gets his name on the score sheet a little bit. I think that's what the first-team staff, you know, would be looking for. The yellow card for the number eight, Jimmy Tarayanen, up against Mabama. As he intercepted that, so there's no challenge that he committed that actually saw him go into the the book it was instead intercepting that free kick cheap yellow card really but an opportunity for a ball whipped in by Orford unable to find a Clariton blue shirt Robinson will try and keep it alive with his head with his head Sturge will try and clear it Earthy will opt to take it down on his left finds it back out to Scarls West Ham have grown back into the game now you feel Mark yeah the good little five minutes they're the good with with the dominant force at the moment here is Moore from distance, forcing a save to his near post from as Sharman Lowe. As I said earlier, it's the sort of night you wouldn't mind it like, going to the ground and skidding on sort of thing. You'd see it. I mean, it's a slippery ball. I mean, you wouldn't mind it bouncing just in front of the keeper. They're quite awkward. Where you can use the conditions yeah. it's on your side. It's funny you said about, it, about the, the booking. I think these days... I'm not anti-official, by the way, but officials are more concerned with the little things of, of like stopping the free kick. And it, you can you can like slide tackle someone knee high and nothing gets said. But if you take a free kick, they're on you. It's a bit of a strange one, that. But it's my. I can't problem. disagree with you on that <laughs> thinking there. To be honest, <laughs> points it out. Great run from Ollie if he gets it. Obama, ignored him. He's keeping the ball. You feel he could have offloaded that quicker then? He could have done, but we still got possession. Hasty will have a go at whipping it in. Mabama's there, who started the move. And now it falls back to Moore. Skulls, first time delivery. Had a lot of airtime there, allowing Sharman Lowe to come and collect that as he rised up. Pick the ball. I'm starting to think, as, as I did say earlier, we always tend to find a way. I mean, the last five minutes, we've sort of found a way to start to control the game. And we need now a goal on the end of it, and I think we really would control the game. Certainly changed the complexion of the team talk. If you were going into the team talk with Steve Potts, you may be, Mark, going into the team talk. What would you say to the players out there right now? Well, actually, we'll be going. Good, of course, I would, I would say so, yeah. Uh, I'd make a big, big thing of the last five or ten minutes, keep doing what we're doing, keep probing, because I think if anyone looks a little more likely to score at the moment, it will be us. So there isn't a great deal to change. If we're, we're the, the team in the ascendancy, let's keep it that way. Obviously, keep the back door shut as well. Yeah. But uh, you know, the, the way we're starting to move the ball and create chances, I fear that... Chelsea had that spell, of course, in the, the midway of this half, where they controlled the ball, it felt like. We're looking to our right a lot. Now it's the opposite. We're looking to our left. It was like a basketball game at points, and now it feels like it's similar, but on a on a longer way. It's a good ball put in. 
like I was saying, it was like a basketball game, but now it's changed to a concept of Chelsea dominating for maybe five to ten minutes and then West Ham taking over. Yeah, I mean, that, that little attack there for Chelsea, I feel, was against the run of play before that. But I think Regan there, that done a, done a just, but he didn't, he didn't make a tackle, he didn't touch the ball, but just being that tight to the centre forward, just being aware of him, it, it hurried the centre forward up. So he, he obviously put it over the bar. Some things like that, lots of the people watching football in the Premier League wouldn't notice stuff like that. Or sounds like I'm singing my own praises. Shouldn't be doing that. But I'm just saying, look out for certain things like that. Absolutely, that's mm -hmm. why... You're here to my side. I would not be able to provide this kind of insight, so we're very happy to have you alongside us, Mark, to provide that tactical insight. I can hear all my mates saying he hasn't got a clue what he's talking about, but that's just banter, don't worry. <laughs> Obama dropping deep up against Castle Dine. He hasn't seen much of the ball in recent minutes. Not like a big part of the Chelsea play with his number eight to Ryan. And Silcott Dubry back to keeper as Chelsea are playing it out from the back now. Ryan and just get tabs on by Orford, but they managed to just break the line there, Chelsea. And now they have an opportunity down this left hand side as it's in to stutter. The ball almost just fell away from him, but what defending that is from Kalen Casey. It was indeed. We got a little bit fortunate it hit the back of Ronnie Sutter's heels, actually, because if it goes past him, he was in for a clean one-on-one, -on -one, but then Caelan was like, you know, still aware of it there and made a good good back pass. He anticipated it well. He did. He did got to time those challenges well, yeah, especially you when you're yeah. coming from the back of a player. Chelsea just unable to get that final ball into the path of Silcott Dubry, but it was a foul on Castle Dine, so an opportunity. No, I don't want to see where you can get booked here. But really, that, he should be more there than from the, from the fella stopping the free kick, as, as I say. He, and he hasn't been? No, nah, he hasn't been booked. He's just having a word with him. Unless he talks himself into it. He does like a chat all week. So. <laughs> this time he hasn't favoured the chat. He's <laughs> gone over to help out his side in the defence. Here we can see. Potential opportunity. And number four, Dylan Williams. It is number eight. To Ryan and looks like it will be Wilcott Dubry. Backed. It's Williams and it's a good ball in. Almost falling at the back post to Billy G. Williams put in a great ball with his left foot towards that back post. That was a that looked like a set piece from the training ground. Yeah, it was, and it was a great header back. I mean, to be fair, if the two fellas at the back stick had one of them calls it, the other one leaves it, it's a tapping. I mean, they've done us a favour by not communicating, if I'm honest, which uh, we'll take gladly, but... Billy G frustrated there, as you can see on the replay. It's not, it's, it's not that often this year, the under 20 hour 21s get undone from a set piece, but we did there, we did get undone, there was probably their, their best chance. Best chance of the yeah. game, of course. Falling late on in this first half as Knightbridge, as his goal kick, cut out by Castle Dine. Stutter popping up on the left, infield to Torino, and that's a good run forward, but even better defending from Patrick Kelly, but Chelsea win the ball back in a good area. Sturge cutting it back. Here is Williams, puts in another ball with his left. This time it falls to Castle Dine, and a brilliant save from Knightbridge. Alert keeping from West Ham's number one, Mark. Yeah, good save, Jack Jacob. I mean, one of those, he didn't really connect that cleanly with it. They, they're the often the hardest ones right in the corner. Back at an arm, good. Struck it low into the ground, like yep. we were saying. Yep. Those low strikes on this kind of surface could help and be a yep. benefit to the team striking. Yep, good save from Jacob. Jacob Knightbridge. Now, you, now you've said it. I'll never Knight forget it. Bridge. Knightbridge. With a silent ass. He lives. He lives near me in Brentwood, actually, and I see his dad out running quite. His dad does lots of runs. Oh, cool. And I always shout out, "Hello, Mr. Knightsbridge," and he probably thinks my name's Knightbridge. But he never, he's such polite. He never says anything. Is me. that is that <laughs> as banter or just forgetful? No, no, he's, he's, he's just old. He's a 62-year-old man forgetting <laughs> what his real name is. <laughs> well, this is what we can take home from today: some set, some tactics for West Ham and how to pronounce your player's name. <laughs> which is always useful for a coach. Especially as I've known him all those years. <laughs> and his old man too. Is that his old man? His old man's, a good, his old man's a good, good half marathon runner, by the is way. Is he? Yeah. I have to follow him on Strava. Here's Skiles. 
Mabama looked like he could tear it up with his left. The rain starts to pour late on in this first half. 90 seconds to go. The closest Chelsea have got was just that opportunity through Billy G. Closest West Ham have got, would you say, still that Kelly chance? I think the Sean Moore header, actually. If, 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 Sean, Moore, if Sean Moore got the header right, I think, I think, I think that was the, the, the best chance. Because it was a good delivery. It could have gone either side of the, you know. Just had to steer it to that corner. Exactly. Exactly. And able to get the desired connection. That was very early on now. One minute to go. Brody Hughes challenged by Mabama. And what have you made of Mabama's performance? Obviously, he's just about to go into the book, which may say and uh, influence your answer here, Mark. But I think he's held the ball up well, and the ball's come out to him from, from the defence. He hasn't really looked to go for it. And that there, that booking is just a... It's because he got fouled himself about a minute earlier and he was just frustrated, he was just getting revenge. And I'm not condoning it, but that's what happened. Is that is that something that happens then in football, would you say? Maybe a bit of an obvious question, but uh, players will get frustrated and then end up just giving away a, a cheap foul and going into the book? Yeah, if you get, if you think you fouled yourself, you, you know, and then it's not given, you can sort of see, see a bit of red. Hopefully not a red card, though. No. A down cut out by Orford, and it looks like there's going to be one minute of stoppage time as Robinson runs down the right. Sturge gets a leg in, and it will be one minute added on. Both sides cancelling one another out. Really, if I'm completely honest, I think the draw at this stage is probably fair. Because, I mean, they've had opportunities, they've had good passages of play, we've had opportunities, we've had good passages of play. Yeah. Yeah, like you said, very 50-50. Yeah. One time, it's, it, it, at a point, it's been Chelsea's to play with the ball and then West Ham 10 minutes later. Started yeah. off frantic in the first five, 10 minutes. Died down a little and then Chelsea found themselves to be on the front foot. Since then, West Ham more so, but the last 10 minutes, it's been fairly equal again. Yeah, no, it has. It has. It's been quite an end-to-end -end game, if I'm honest. Entertaining 0-0 so far as we're almost go into the yeah, half-time yeah, break. Getting back to what you said about, I think Devine's held the ball up really well. You know, he's been a target, he's brought people into play. He hasn't been enough as a goal for it for me, for a centre forward. He's got to be more of a... Because that's what... That, that, you can hold the ball up as much as you like, but you'll you be remembered on, on what you do in the box on, on, a, on a goal scoring sort of He's aspect. got some more stuff to do in the box for the second half, as do the Chelsea players as it ends goalless here. We're about to go through the highlights. Of course, Mark... Feel free to go and tell the players what they should do to open the scoring for that second 45. I'll be, I'll be back for the kickoff. Don't worry about that. <laughs> so this chance from Raksaki. In the corner floated in by Silcott Dubry. Came to Raksaki on the edge of the area. Knightbridge diving to his left. The post saved him. And then it ends goalless on the first 45. It was then whipped in by Williams to that back post to say it's a training piece goal. It was Billy G, the captain, at the back post, unable to just get it in. He had Washington just to the side of him. Both players contesting to get on the end of that ball. Past Knightbridge's post and still goalless as Castledine striking it with his left. Knightbridge alert to keep that down, of course, as Mark was saying, he could have gone either side. It was a good connection there from Castledine. Just unable to find the back of the net. So that was the first half action. We're about to see the main man, the main manager for the first team, David Moyes. A little Q&A for you all in this half-time break. Questions and answers with David Moyes next. Paul, I'm very passionate about Scotland. Uh, I'm from Glasgow, uh, very much a Glaswegian. But been away from Glasgow for so many years now, it's, I, I, I don't even imagine how many. My dad still lives in Glasgow and my brother lives in Glasgow, so I, I get up now and again to see them. 
But uh, I really enjoy going back to Glasgow. It's, uh, I think it's what I would call home, but I don't know if you said to me, am I going to go back and live there? I don't know. I think I'm enjoying uh, the bright lights of uh, uh, being in England at the moment. So, uh, But Glasgow and Scotland will always be my home. I certainly have. And uh, Lee, the club driver, actually get, got me a pie in the mash. But then he got me something they called liquor. He poured the liquor in top, and I'm saying, what is this he's putting in top of this? And he had vinegar on it as well, and all sorts. So, uh, by the way, uh, look, pie and mashes, everybody enjoys pie and mash. The bit I've not done is they talk about the jelly deals, and I'm not sure about the jelly deals, so. But the pie and mash was all right, not the liquor though. Look, I actually thought that I would have loved us to have, to have been lifting the trophy in claret. No way if we could have put more claret jerseys on, because it's the club colours and we'll always be remembered for that. But obviously there was a rule which we couldn't do it. So I always like the clubs to wear what their, what their colours are. And I know we're seeing so many changes every year and whatnot. And yeah, I think the one thing about the strip we wore in the final as well will be that it'll be remembered greatly. It'll be something which maybe the club goes back to in years and years to come at different times in, in remembrance of it. Well, if, first of all, you have to have seen enough of them to, to think that they're ready to, be, to train and play with the first team. Uh, I'm going to say sadly, I think it's getting harder for younger boys to get in so early. I, I believe that I've probably given five, 16-year-olds a debut in the Premier League and through my career I've always had a lot of young players. I was a young player at Celtic when I got my debut at 18. So I've sort of been used to that. I've been brought up in youth football with my dad and the, the boys teams he ran in Glasgow and, and always looking out for the boys who are making their debuts for clubs. So we're very much aware of trying to give young players the opportunity. But I think the, the level of the Premier League's at and the way it is, it's become much more harder to give younger boys a debut. So 18 year old was the young thing probably a few years ago. It's certainly I think it's moved more to like 21 now for players in the in the Premier League. I always have to say, you know, first of all you have to really love the game and make sure that you you need to put hours and hours of work in, you know, do all the the coaching badges as soon as you possibly can and you know keep at it. There are so many now uh, things out there regarding leadership, you know, coaching, management, all things which all play its part when you when you get the opportunity to become a manager or a coach. You should take every opportunity to, to get as many of them in the, the bag as you can and go and see people speak, go and watch coaches work, go and ask to see if you can come into training and watch people training. Uh, because sometimes there's always something that you, I always found that you could pick up and, through my early years when I was becoming a young coach and then trying to go into management, uh, I'd made sure that I covered as many things and went to see managers working and I was on every coaching course every summer you could think of to try and improve myself. Uh, well, for, for me, it would always be Sir Alex because he was the, he was the one, but Walter Smith was, was a big friend, but a big mentor and someone who I always admired. I took his job when he was the manager of Everton and I became the manager of Everton just after that. Uh, Sir Alex used to speak to me and I used to phone Sir Alex for advice as well. So I think we had some really, really top Scottish managers at the time. I, I admire people like George Graham, who Scottish managers who worked in England and you know were really successful. Then you could go to you know, Bill Shankly and Sir Matt Busby and, and all the others as well. There was, there was an awful lot of... Scottish managers, Jock Steen was a, was a great Scottish manager, so there's been so many uh, really good good managers in the past. Something I'm, I'm very proud to be in part of, uh, I I've sort of felt it right from the start anyway, I felt as if I was, when you're, when you're in it, you're in it and you're accepted and you know, I think as long as you, you give your best and you do your all, I think everybody accepts you. So many things, but it's really difficult to, to explain. I think uh, I was saying this to a friend the other day about, you know, it's not something you get to do very often. If you're lucky and you're Pep or you're Jurgen, you might get that feeling. But it's something which I've not had enough in my career, which I'd like more, but I've had some big successes. But to win a European trophy, you know, it's, it's an incredible achievement. So I don't think it, you, you don't make anything up. It's all. At the moment, you no. Know, Jara's gone through and go. I'm halfway down the pitch already, not knowing what I'm doing. Nearly, you know, out of con out of control. Really, we win. You know, you you're not really bothered what anybody thinks. You know, uh, I saw my dad. I brought him down, and 
they'll put a medal on him, didn't think anything of it, just thought it was, you know what you do. And lots of those things, sort of, uh, sort of a lot of people took them and took them well and saw them as a, as a good thing. So I couldn't say how it happened, but I just hope that I get the chance to do it again. Probably not, no. I think, I think I'd, have been, I'd have been lying if I said, yeah, this is what we're going to do this, because look, let's be fair, West Ham are nowhere near Europe. Nowhere near even you know, qualifying in any rate situation. So if it's easy to say it now it's happened. But I think the, the year we were in COVID and we were doing so well, you know, we, we finished sixth in the sixth in the league was a brilliant achievement for the team. And then uh, you know that first year in Europe, I think we were all so excited by it. We couldn't wait on the draw. We found ourselves getting to a semi-final against Eintracht Frankfurt. And really, I think that year was probably the the most exciting games for me because of, you know, we were away in Lyon, we were in Seville, and I think those trips were, were big clubs, big games for the supporters to see, and obviously the games at the stadium were, were immense, they really were. So they, I'll remember that a lot, but, uh, <clears throat> you know, obviously everything everything goes behind uh, goes behind Prague. Edson's made a great, great impact, he really has, he's, he's settled in really well. I think when we were losing Declan Rice, undoubtedly I was concerned because we're losing one of the best players in, in English Premier League at the moment. And he's also someone who had a great influence, you know, great boy around the place as everybody here knows. So Edson's come in, uh, he's taken a little bit to adapt to the intensity and the amount of game time, which uh, we missed a couple of games, but overall uh, his performances have been really good and we've been, we've been so pleased with him. Uh, probably my wife. Probably my wife. If I didn't say that, she'd probably be annoyed. Uh, uh, my brother I speak to my brother quite a bit as well, and uh, my dad. I tried to get a call to my dad to see that he's that he's doing well. I am probably just uh, trying trying to do my messages, uh, but also now that what your phone allows you to to get the news, so it's an easy way of picking up uh, early stories or things if you need to read read a little bit now. It's much easier to do it from your phone. I would love Billy Connolly to be one of them. Actually, a friend of mine is Ali McCoyst. I'd like Ali McCoyst. I've had some, some great players over the years who have been great, are still great friends and, and great company. And I'm trying to think of any. And look, Sir Alex would be good to have on as well, especially because he might bring the wine and he's, he always had the best wine, so we, we, we get the best red wine. Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd need to think about that, but I'd certainly, uh, Billy Connolly would be one I think I would, I'd love to have on, yeah. I think I'd like to draw, know who I was going to draw in the next round of uh, European Europa League. I could go and watch them a bit more before we play them and, and get ready.
hide out there for a while, but yeah, it's still there. Welcome back everyone, as myself and Mark are ready for the start of the second half, as are the players as they're back out on the pitch. Mark, half-time team talk, how was the mood in the dressing room? Uh, it, was, it was a bit, no, no, no it, it wasn't, oh, we're dominating or we're being dominated, it was, as the game is, as a nil-nil, it was a, you know, it's a fair reflection really, I don't think one team deserved to be in front and that's what we spoke about. Of course. But we spoke about some things that we might be able to capitalise on. And things, good areas, what we've done, and things that we've got to do better. Absolutely. Chelsea. Uh, how's that? Is that better? Is that better now? Can you hear me? It's a good opportunity here for Chelsea. The stutter strikes it low, palmed away by Knightbridge. Early opportunity on this. In this second half, Mark. Good goalkeeping as well, because he was not only just making the save, he was aware of where the, the next ball's going to be, so he saved it and got it out of the danger area. And that takes, you know, that's, that's hours and hours of practice on the training pitch with goalkeeping coaches. And that, 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 you know, it, was, it was a straightforward save, but, you know, he didn't want to try and grasp it tonight and it bounced out. He made sure it was away from the danger zone. Good, good move from Chelsea, to be fair. It was good football. What do you think the talk in the dressing room would have been like for Chelsea and Mark Robertson? Uh, probably similar to ours. I mean, they, they, they don't give anything away. Uh, you've created chances, keep creating chances. Rizal meets that header. Here come West Ham with their first opportunity in the second half to bring ball, the ball forward through Sean Moore as he cuts it in on his left. Orford into Kelly. A spell of possession in the Chelsea half in this second 45 as Earthy comes deep to help out his side in a spell of possession. All played in from Casey. Now Clayton, as he takes it past Sturge, puts it in. Cleared away by G. Stutter tries to help out, but it's taken down by Kelly. Does he look like he may have fancy to tee himself up? Earthy just shimmies with the ball, offloads it to Clayton, pulls it back, Mubama! And another great save from the goalkeeper. This time made by Teddy Sharman Lowe as he came down low to save that effort from Mubama. I think that was excellent play from Regan Clayton, considering he's playing as a left side centre back. He overlapped and got himself to the byline. Good chance and divine, good chance. Made quite good contact, but as you say, good save from the keeper. But just shows you how even this game is and end-to-end. -end. So far, the keepers cancelling out the efforts that come their way from the attackers. This time, the Chelsea goalkeeper is that's headed down by Washington. He tried to find the run of Stutter. Play back. Up by G. Here comes Sturge down this left hand side. Robinson chases. Now it's offloaded down to Stutter, who finds himself on the left hand side. Bodies forward here, Mark. Yeah. I, I don't think. I think one of Chelsea's weaknesses is defending or putting crosses in. They're, more, they're better at threading the ball through the middle. 
we've put crosses in and they've put crosses in have always favoured us to, to defend the cross or attack the cross for a goal. So, this is a good, good run there from Scarls as he carries it on down that left-hand side. How did you say West Ham have done uh, combating the way Chelsea play, especially if they play through the middle? Would you say West Ham would therefore want to play rather narrow to make sure that there isn't enough space in that middle part for Chelsea to exploit? Yeah, I think I think that is a tactic that, that, that we've used, but then that, that's fine and that, that's, that's defending, but just utilise it when we have possession. Make, make our crossing count, that's the key. I think we, we've got, we are a threat for crosses. Late challenge there. You could tell from the sound effects from Mark there that that wasn't the best of challenges made by Patrick Kelly. It, it was one of those that was there to be challenged because it was a, bat, a, a loose touch from the Chelsea player, but it was quite ag ag agricultural, if I can say agricultural. It was quite agricultural. It was two-footed, it felt like. Or well, just the one as he stretched out his right leg and followed up with his left. Just getting the ankles of Yimi Turainen. Yeah, I, th I, th I think that's a booking, a booking that we can't argue with, really. Starts up, but play resumed of 11 v 11, of course. No, no need for a red card there, of course, not even in the conversation. But Patrick Kelly showing he can do the, the ugly parts of the job. I think if you said that, if this was a game on, on the on the Premier League with the VAR would have probably looked at it for about 20 minutes. Well, I suppose we've become so used to seeing that. That's why Red was mentioned. But Skulls in the meantime, testing Ca Castledine, gets a corner on that far side. He seemed to be getting quite a lot of joy from the left-hand side, you know, either getting Oli Skulls or even getting Regan in. We're getting Dan, Dan Chelsea's right quite, you know, quite consistent. Which is the thing we did speak about at half-time in the dressing room. We feel that uh, if the delivery is right, we might be able to capitalise on a set piece. It's all about the delivery, delivery and first contact. A high ball in, you can see the water flick off the ball as it was in the air. Earthy will chase Sarayanen. He'll thump it away with his left foot as Robinson's there to head it down. That's a good header there from Robinson. It could have gone wayward, but instead he keeps the ball and he makes a good run in field. Laying it off as it's whipped in. Mapama, his first touch just lets him down there, Mark. Yeah, without a doubt. Fantastic header from Junior to himself. You don't often see that. Headed the ball down to himself, yeah. The game does seem to have opened up a little bit second half. Both teams getting chances and opportunities in and around it. It's Ryan and great, great challenge from great, Robinson great as he had tackle. Kelly there. This Kelly has good, to be careful. Good situation, good situation this. Where it's on a going, yellow. Sean, where are you going? Sturge chases, recovery, great recovery. that's another great challenge, this time from Sean Moore, coming in on Zach Sturge. Stutter goes over, throw the ball. He gave me a funny look there, Ronnie, to say, what are you doing with Mike in your hand? <laughs> <laughs> he might think you've been demoted to co-commentator, Mark. Is it demoted or promoted? Demoted, yeah, I don't know. know, maybe I'm down talking the role, but um, <laughs> no chance, no chance, I suppose. Well, well tell me how much money you earn, and I'll tell you if it's demotion or promotion. <laughs> it's certainly a demotion compared to the players on the pitch right now, I'm sure. <laughs> I, I thought most was, things are. I thought as my coaching career uh, comes to an end, maybe my commentary career of might, course. might kick in. Absolutely I'm expecting. I'm expecting a call of Sky any minute, actually. Probably is this not big enough for you, Mark? No, it's probably to tell me my subscription hasn't been paid. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, Out to that right-hand side, unable to be kept down by Moore. As Robinson presses Dylan Williams. Be another throw, this time for those in blue. Getting, we're getting situations from Chelsea and from us where one bit of control and one final ball is enough just to, just to put us in and, and put, put either side. No, no one up there. I was thinking, we've got that under control. It's only a simple pass and we're in. We only saw that a couple of times maximum in the first half, so it certainly has opened up Without in the doubt. second. Without a doubt. Castledine trying to keep it under his spell, but Robinson gets the ball away from him. Castledine believes he was fouled by West Ham's number two. Yeah, he's planning Robinson. Plimpsel. Planning Plimpsel's a fella, behave yourself. 
Whipped in again, and oh. this time it's headed over. Sean Moore in a similar position that we saw in the first half. This time it was over the crossbar rather than to the right of the far post. He, he did make better contact. I've, I've only been speaking to him five minutes previous about the, what we done yesterday with, with that sort of thing. Saying about the chance in his first half, if it comes again, and he's obviously not meant to do that, the, the young lad, but that's a good opportunity. Good opportunity, and you'd say, well, Sean Moore has had the best opportunities for West Ham this evening. Sean, Both Moore, Sean Moore and the cutback, the cutback that Devine had. Well, Moore again, West Ham looking promising here. Here, here is Divin Mubama. Good defending there from the captain, Billy G, as he slid down low to block that effort from Mubama. This time they tried to play it down that right-hand side. Louisiao clearing it up nicely. West Ham keeping their foot firmly on the gas through Robinson on this right. Lovely good trickery feet, there with his too. right foot. Deliver, PK, deliver. Patrick Kelly trying to... Play a we're, firm bowl in across the box. We're definitely asking them, them more questions in the last five or ten minutes. Certainly. Look at this replay here from Moore into Mabama, striking it with his left. Just before that, the trickery from Robinson to just pull the ball in and release it with his right to take it forward. And then Kelly, more great defending there from Billy G as well to get in the way of a West Ham effort. I think, West Ham in the think, corner. I think Junior was watching this, me in the staff game a little bit there with his trickery of his feet, reminding me of myself this morning. Very humble, Mark. And then the alarm went off and I went up. <laughs> <laughs> the ball played in, but that'll be disappointing. That'll disappoint Steve Potts. As the goalkeeper, Sharman Lowe, managed to collect the ball, and that's another cheap yellow card this time. The first one from Mabama in the first half, and the second time with Kalen Casey. Of course, he bought you boots, but he's just gone into the book. Yeah, I, I, I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt, and I think the keeper might have run into him. My nose is getting larger as we speak. Well, West Ham players can know that as long as they buy Mark football boots, they can do whatever they want on the football pitch. They could score an own goal, but it's fine. He's got a new pair of Predators. <laughs> Sturge. Robinson chasing in on Sturge, keeping tabs on the number five. Great pressing from West Ham. Great pressing. The, yeah, fantastic. And, and, now, and now we're in the last third and we've got position. We're definitely in the ascendancy. West Ham on the front foot. But as we saw in the second half, in the first half, of course it was frantic at the beginning, but West Ham would have their turn and Chelsea would have their spell. Could we see the same in this second where Chelsea then start to dominate and have similar style opportunities? I think this has lasted longer. This is actually, the, you know, this is a pattern of play when we're con controlling the controlling the minute. It doesn't mean that Chelsea are not a, a threat on the break because they're playing off the break. But at the moment, we, we do look the most likely. Absolutely. It's all right you're saying that. It doesn't count for nothing. The ball's got to get in the back of the net. We've just been looking to our right, which will please you and your staff in the opening 12 minutes here. Undoubtedly. Orford plays it short to Skulls. Does he fancy one from distance? He does. Execution isn't quite there with his left foot, as it usually is. Oli Skulls. I think you've been extremely polite. That was uh, a... <laughs> that should be at Twickenham rather than uh, Rush Green. I think he would take criticism from a coach rather than myself, so I'll allow you to, to do that. I, I did speak in the change room. I think if, if we can get a few, sh a few shots to dip and maybe hit the surface, and this a night like tonight really gathers pace. Of course. Rain did come out at the half-time break. It's gone away for now. Sturge is there, but Robinson just before him. Back to Robinson, lively as ever. Down the flank. Zorfa tries to find the run of Mabama. Really unable to just... Get a firm on the, uh, get a hold on the game of Mabama. Hasn't really played with the PL. Hasn't really played with the under 21s recently. Mark, would you say that's the reason why he hasn't really been yeah, able to find his way in this game? Yeah, it might be. I mean, he doesn't often train with the 21. He's always the first. He's always the first to me. And you have to get some sort of understanding. I mean, he knows his players well from last year, the under 18s in the youth cup and last year in the 21s. But I do, I do hear what you're saying. He, he, that little sharpness and little, you know, you know what your, your teammates are going to do is important. I think Junior's done well uh, this half. Really has done well. Absolutely. Junior and Kelly. Patrick Kelly's one of those players that's like the opposite. He knows exactly where the players are. 
knows how to make those runs to provide an option. Chelsea with a spring in their step, Sturge down the left. Robertson chases, but Sturge manages to put a ball in. Wayward, though, unable to find any of the intended targets as it'll be chased by Castledine. Kelly will pick up that pass from Clayton. Continues that run. Or is Clayton? Trying to switch it. Mabama just couldn't quite get there. G did, but it fell kindly off the ricochet to West Ham's number nine. West Ham just enjoying the spell of passing around the back, which we haven't seen too much of in this game so far, Mark. No, no I mean, uh, because Chelsea did start to press us. Great little turn, Sean. Lovely turn from Moore. Intercepted. Chelsea bring like it this. forward through Dylan like Williams. This. Space like to his right. Here is Castledine. Puts a dangerous ball in. Stutter there to try and get a goal against his former side. Brilliant defending. I believe it came off the head of Kalen Casey. It did indeed. It did indeed. Good defending. Good positioning. Good defending. Brilliant defending indeed. Does West Ham have a chance to try and get forward? It's chased down by Earthy. But he had three blue shirts around him. Was always going to be the underdog in that affair. As Casey and Stutter go head to head, it was Stutter who barged into Casey. Mm, through the back of Casey, in fact. Yeah, it could have been. Um, Ronnie's laughing, so, so, so maybe it was. I, th I thought the initial, after the initial pass, it was offside, but it was only a, a, a brief glimpse of it. Earthy just cutting it back there, Stutter. It was a good, it was a good, good headed clearance from Callum, I think. I think Jacob would have saved it anyway. Hitting it with the right, with the side of his foot. It looks like Chelsea are now having their spell. Will we have their exactly. spell? Exactly. Down the right again, Castledine. Into there, Yimmy Turainen. Corner for the Blues. Can you notice the difference in the style of play? When Chelsea get wide and they break lines, then they're not hitting crosses in, they're looking to thread passes in and pull balls back. When we get to the byline, we're looking to put crosses in. It's just a, a, a different way of a trying way to play. Yeah, yeah. Do you feel one is more effective than the other? It depends what players you have, really. If, if you've got players making those darting runs and you want to play like that, if you've got players running across who, who are good at getting on the end of crosses, obviously the, the better teams mix it up, play a bit of both. Ball whipped in with the left, falling to Stutter. Just unable to keep it and turn quickly as he's forced to play it slowly to Sturge, but it falls back to Stutter as he tries to whip it in. But Louisiao is there to stretch out a leg. And West Ham tried to get the ball forward down this right hand side. Jarman Lowe coming off his line, but Stutter popping up on this left hand side, linking up with Sturge there. Dangerous opportunity for Chelsea. Like he almost hit the ball out of play. The fantastic ball from their goalkeeper. I'm not 100% sure he meant it. The really good ball got, got his team. I'll give him credit. It was a good pass from the keeper there. Credit for the away side. Yeah. That's from not... Mark. Brilliant. Do you think any other players have taken your eye here, of course, in the opening start of the second half that maybe didn't in the first? Uh, no, I still I still like their number eight. I think he, he's had a good all-round job. I mean, uh, Castle Dine in the pocket. That's a great ball from Castle Dine there, by the way. Casey managing to get the better of Stutter there. That's a foul. Good ball there from Castle Dine. I mean, I know Castle Dine of old, so I wouldn't say he surprised me. He's, he, he's a good player anyway. I still think we can get we can get at their back line. Leo Castle Dine was on the bench in the Carabao Cup. This is Blackburn and came on as a sub in their semi-final, their recent semi-final win against Middlesbrough. Did he? Yeah, mm -hmm. for the senior side. So it's always promising to see these players make an appearance in the senior side. Of course, you've got Divine and Mabama, Ollie Skiles. Who would you say is the next likely target on this, on this pitch right now in Claret and Blue, who could be playing for David Moyes shortly? Uh, a bit too I'm soon. going to be a bit of a politician and, and say that's David Moyes' decision. Thank you. But we've got lots of players who I think could, could go to the first team and wouldn't look out of place. Lots of players on this pitch now. But I'm never going to... David Moyes knows far more about the game and Kevin Nolan and Billy and, and Mark Robson. So 
I might, sometimes I'm biased towards academy players. I say, oh, they can do a job, and maybe, maybe no, I've never worked at first team level. I'm just a fan at first team level. Uh, Although at first team level as a fan, I've seen well over a thousand games for West Ham. Well, you are Mr. West Ham. You live and breathe West Ham, but also the West Ham Academy. Something you mentioned in recent interviews, which I was interested by, is the fact that in foreign leagues, they, they pay in Holland, they pay the lower levels or the academy levels more than the actual senior sides because they're actually seen as the tougher leagues or sides to coach rather than the first team players. Well done you for your research. <laughs> I did say that in the interview, it's true. That's true, yeah. in the, because, because they think that players of 10, 11, 12 years of age, that's when they're sort of moulded into players and they're more susceptible to information. Not when, when you're 17, 18, you can obviously change players, but you know, that, that's, that's the player you're, predominantly you're going to get. So, uh, that in, in, in great pass by the way, in, in Holland, that's where you get more money from being in that age. We're here, the better coaches always are trying to get to the 21s, 18s level, really, because you know, everyone wants to supposedly to work at the top. To get to the first team in the end, that's like the end goal. Yeah, to get to the first team, but for someone like myself who, who's never kicked a ball at that level, it's very, you, you wouldn't be, I mean, if you, if you look at the first team coaches at West Ham, they're all ex-players. I mean, the, the, the gaffer was a centre-half, Mark Robson played for West Ham, various clubs, Billy McKinley played, Kevin Nolan played a few games yeah. for West Ham United. So, of course, more recent. Yeah, so, so that, that's what nearly, there's very few players and you're obviously going to come back and, qu and quote me Jurgen Klopp, but uh, he's probably the exception to the rule. Well, Sven Goran Eriksson didn't play at a good level. Most of them played at a good level. Pep wasn't a bad player either. Right. Do often say that the players that played in the lower leagues end up being the better managers, maybe because they they dealt with more, not just winning as a whole, which of course can be useful, but seeing the whole side of the game, the relegations yeah, yeah, as well as the, yeah, the big it. victories. We've been patient here, we've worked it well. Can we have an opening? Can we have an opening? No, oh, we can't. Skulls and Abel hasn't had the best deliveries this game so far. Maybe that's down to the surface or it's just an off day with his left foot. Yeah, I mean, he sets himself such high standards. He's a great cross on the ball on his goals. I mean, he'd be, he'd be disappointed with that. He'd be disappointed with that. Just one, I think, especially in these conditions, just flash him across. It hasn't even got to be your player who gets a touch because he can go in as an own goal. But. We worked that well. We worked it from side to side, and it's needed a bit of quality in the cross. It's that final ball which is which is lacked for both sides this evening, which is why it remains goalless at the moment. Obviously, both goalkeepers were or had to make big saves in the in the start of this second half. Well, huh? and that's a loose ball. And Sean Moore will try and get the better of as he tries to feed it is into it? the danger zone with his left. Instead, it'll it pull <laughs> Kelly back to Moore. Orford on the outside of the area. Here is Skulls, earthy on the overlap. Skulls, instead striking it low. Here's Orford! Oh. Deflected off a blue shirt. Oh. And it'll oh. fall oh. out oh. to this oh. right-hand side where Sean Moore currently lies. But instead, Zach Sturge will drive forward. Here's Stutter, dropping deep. Nice one too between himself and Washington there as he threads a pass out to Williams on this left-hand side. He gets on the end of it, whips it in with his left, and that's the closest Chelsea have got to goal all game. All coming down this left-hand side. And it was their number 10, Leo Castledine, who tried going to that bottom corner and couldn't quite execute it. Worrying signs there from West Ham, Mark. Very similar to, to Sean, Sean's chance in the first half. Great play from, uh, from Ronnie Stutter and, and the fellow down the left-hand side. Great delivery. I think you should have just let... Sometimes you, you're better letting the ball just hit you. He's in the middle of the six-yard box. Ball hits him anywhere, anywhere else. It's going to just fly into the net. Trying to, sometimes to be a little bit too precise. Luckily for us. Power over precision there, but of course, Arsenal Dine went that precise effort into that bottom corner unable to pull it off let off for West Ham as it still remains goalless as we're almost into the final 20 minutes here Williams will just play it back to his goalkeeper whose clearance sort of taken away from the wind and is this an opportunity for Stutter as he's up against Casey manages to get the better of Casey still Stutter and it's in 
takes it round the goalkeeper and slots it home just before the 69th minute. It's the old West Ham boy that haunts them at Rush Green. Ronnie Stutter opens the scoring here late on. You have to say he's done very well there. He, 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 he's done very well. Not just because I know Ronnie, not because he was here for years. He's took that well and he's up against, he's up against Caleb. He's twisted him. He's twisted, you know, he was really relaxed with his finish. It sometimes just shows you, you don't need it. It was just a nice precision finish in the corner. I did, I did say early, early doors, Ronnie, Ronnie can be a bit of a threat towards us, and, it, and, and he was. It, it's, it's probably against the run of play slightly, but football, football's always about if you don't take your chances, you don't win your games. And they got so close just then with their number 10. Yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah that, 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 that is right. Castle Dine. Yeah. And they played through the middle, Mark. You said that all game. Yeah, I mean, uh, that, that's where their game's played. I mean, if you, as you say, you, you can count the num number of... They just haven't put any crosses in. Well, we have. It's just a different style of play. It's not a right and a wrong style, really. It's just the way it is. And it's whoever gets the better of the other. And so far, it's Chelsea getting the better of West Ham. Ronnie Stutter taking it round Knightbridge. And Caelan Casey's had such a good game. Been commanding in that back line. But it was Stutter who just managed to weave his way through that tall frame of Caelan Casey. I think playing against his, all his old friends and coming back to West Ham, that's probably how he dreamt it last night, actually. But West Ham, this West Ham 21 side has got a lot of character. We, we, we're not beaten until we're beaten. We might be in. Mabama! Oh. Looked like a point-blank save from Sharman Lowe as it was kept alive on the edge of the area by Orford. Obama trying to keep it down. Another great save from the Chelsea shot stopper. Good, good, good response from going to go down. And I would have, have expected nothing less. You know, we've got good character in this side. I mean, we, we was down against Southampton this year in the league three times. We come back to draw for you all. So, you know, we, we, we're not throwing any towels in. We, we'll be going right to the end, right to the 98th minute, I think it is these days. Yeah. It? <laughs> but, uh, you know, we, we've got to regroup, set ourselves down and keep creating chances. All whipped in, palmed away. And of course it was Mabama, his last game in the Premier League too, was against Southampton. So maybe that could prove to be an omen when Mabama's on the pitch. There's a, a chance for West Ham to stay in the game. Here is Mabama as it's laid off, but unable to just find the Claret and Blue shirt. Of course, well, West Ham have had such a good season at this level. The only loss you've had in the PL2 was in your first game against Arsenal, and that was away from home. The other loss came at home to a professional side in Wickham Wanderers. So apart from those two games, this West Ham side aren't used to being on the wrong end of the scoreline. No, but there has been, as I say, there's been games when we've come back in and haven't lost. Like, like Southampton. I think we were far too... We overplayed there, if anything. It was intricate. Should have got a shot off. A great situation. We were trying to look for the perfect goal. And once it come back there, we should be looking to shoot, especially in these conditions. I mean, we're getting Earthy. in these sort of areas. Oh, look at it. Here is Orford, Did. controlled so well, unable to execute that finish. But just before that, it was brilliant. Trickery from Earthy. As he managed to just touch it into his colleague to try and open up the opportunity for Orford to run onto outside the penalty area. Chelsea just playing it round the back. Here is Dylan Williams, Zach Sturgeon, plenty of room on this left-hand side. Robinson just keeping tabs on him now. I mean, it, it, even since Chelsea scored, we've had two or three good opportunities. I mean, the game is, is, is you know, it's far from gone. Obama just dropping deep to help out and pass it to Orford, who is then challenged, and it's Castledine who gives away a foul. I think it's still, still, still 20 minutes to go, so we're far from out of it. If we get one before 80, we can go on and win it. Of course. From this distance, who would you usually have taking the, the free kicks? It's a bit, if, it was, if it was at all wide, then we might be putting crosses in. It's a little bit too straight. I actually, have, if I'm honest, I haven't got a Scooby. What are they going to do? Someone who doesn't come from East London, that means clue. <laughs> Thank you for that definition of East East London slang. You know what Scooby what Scooby, yeah, Scooby gets the clue? 
Well, Scooby-Doo, I'm well assuming that's done. where it comes from. Well done, sir. Oh, thank you, Mark. Thank you. Where, where do you Scoo- come from? Where do you originate from? I actually I originate from a nice little town called Haywood Tea in uh, the heart you, of Sussex. You're, you're posh. You're very posh. <laughs> very posh. Go on, George. Slightly different dialects, but here behind the mic. <laughs> as Essex meets Sussex. Are you Essex-based or London? Essex. Essex. I wasn't born in Essex. I was actually born in South London. South London. So you've got the Cockney in you. Yeah, I suppose I have. <laughs> Which isn't a bad thing, of course. <laughs> Not ashamed of it. Not ashamed I'm of it. I'm proud to be a Londoner. Good. I'm proud to be a Londoner. They fell asleep here. Yeah. Go on. Robinson in room as they play it short. Whipped in again, headed away again by Castle Dine. As stutter the goal scorer, tries to keep it under his spell. But brilliant improvisation as Chelsea come away with the ball here, as Williams spots a lovely pass through to Stutter, who then tried to play that second pass, but it's still alive, struck low by their number seven, Silcott Dubry. As he tries to whip it in with his left, it comes off Orford. They do look dangerous on the break, and I think they're playing off that, and they're on the transition, as soon as they get it, they go quick and then try to utilise Ronnie Stutter's pace. The improvisation there as well when they manage to head it to one another. I, I'm always impressed by that, the fact that players can can use that part of their body in, in such an effective way to open up an opportunity. Another opportunity for the away side to try and double their lead. Raksaki outside the area, Stutter looked like he was teeing one up, but it didn't get to him. Instead, Williams will... Play the ball out to that right-hand side from the centre circle. Turanian is unable to keep it in, so it will be a West Ham throw. I wonder if after 75 minutes, Steve might be thinking of making a change, freshen, freshen it up a little bit. Can't see of course, any. you've got Kamari Swaya yep. on the bench. He scored against Stoke yep. two weeks ago. Would you see him as a player to bring on, Mark? I think he is. He is coming on. Looking at Julian. <laughs> Steve Potts obviously aware that there is need for a change for his side. Did you t- do a like for like replacement with Mabama? It looks like Mabama is going to be coming off. Yeah, it could even be, I don't know this. Yvonne might even be on minutes. But being on minutes, he might be under instructions from the first team that he can only play so many minutes because he's in mind to be on the bench Sunday. Right. I don't know that. That is complete guesswork. So when you say the term in minutes, that yeah. obviously suggests he has to, there is only a certain amount he can play or is he advised to play or? No, I mean, as I say, there's probably a member of the first, I can't see over there in the stand, but it's probably a member of the first team staff there. Either the gaffer himself or Kevin Nolan or, or Billy or someone like that, and they might be saying, you might pop down at Steve and say, take him off after 75 because you know, he might be coming off the bench Sunday. Or that, that's, that's one time for being on minutes, or it could be a physio or a sports scientist. If someone's coming back from injury, he can only play 60, he can only play 75 or, or something like that. But this one here with Divine coming off, it might be a straight tactical change, or it might be that he's involved Sunday for the first day. Of course, Kamari Swaya, what, you, what do you take on, on the substitute coming on, the striker? Cam's a good player, he's played in the league for Crawley, he's just come back from Malone, he's been at Crawley since the start of the season. You know, he, I wouldn't say it's a minus for, for, for D, you know. He's a great player, he can play off, he's, got, he's, a, he's a good focal point to play it into, he's got great quick feet. Could do, he could, his goal scoring record could be better, but you know, he, he's, a, he's, a good, he's, he's a good number nine coming on without a doubt. And Devine's a good number nine going off. It's a positive like-for-like like change. Although, I have to be honest with you, the way Walt Devine's coming on the pitch, he looks like he's going down the shop to buy a paper. He can be a little bit more enthusiastic. He's walking like Donald Duck. So, he, would you <laughs> rather see a bit more frustration showed from him, the not fact for, that he's no, had to no, come no, off? Not, or? For, not frustration. A little bit more of movement, a little bit more of doing himself up. I mean, he's such a laid-back character guy. He, he, he really is laid back. He, he, he is with a ball right now. 
and uh, I just killed him that bad touch. But no, he, he, he didn't mean anything. He just he just walking on like quite disinterested. He wasn't. He's come on over 75 minutes. That's his so laid back cam. That's what that's what he's about. And then he could just beat beat someone and curl one in the top corner equally in the next five minutes. <laughs> And it wouldn't look like it's phased in one bit, not which I suppose all. is the composure you need no, no, to make no, it. No, not at all. And he'd probably just walk off without even celebrating. He's just the character he is. Look. Who would say the loudest characters in the dressing room? Regan Clayton, without a shadow of a doubt. That's a brilliant ball in the meantime. Fred through to Stutter. Can he make it too? He can't. Good goalkeeping there from Knightbridge, but they keep it alive through watching Wellington. And this could be a second, another brilliant save from Knightbridge as it's cleared away and West Ham through Moore will try and get it forward. But my word, Mark, brilliant goalkeeping from your number one. Brilliant goalkeeping, absolutely brilliant. I, I have to say, you said to me earlier about who's, in, who's impressed me from the Chelsea. I have to say, Ronnie Stutterless, his movement's been excellent, Ronnie. Everything that Chelsea's done that's done well has come from him. Here's Regan, our loud man. Clayton just trying to get it beyond Castledine. Two brilliant stops there from Knightbridge. He's kept his side in it. He's kept West oh, Ham yes. in it. Yes, he really has. He made two, he made two or three fans. I mean, really, you think the fella made any contact, it was going to be a goal from that, really. Kept us in. That's what you have to do, son. Just stay in the game. Stay in the game. Especially there's only one goal in it. Just stay in it. What would you say are the, the, the difference in qualities between him and Anang? Here comes Erfi in the meantime. That question uh, can... Yeah, wait. I'll wait for our equaliser, then I'll tell you. Absolutely. Is, here it, is the equaliser coming? Swire just unable to try and pull the trigger there. Um, back to the question, Mark. Joe's been Joe's been in and around uh, the PDP phase, which is professional development phase, a bit longer than Jacob. Uh, I don't think there's a lot, a lot of difference in the goalkeeping because it used to be Joe's to have really good feet. He, you know, he, he a sign wider. His, his distribution. I think where Jacob went out on loan last year to uh, Harrow for a year in men's football really improved him. It really has improved him, both as a keeper and with his feet. Playing non-league, you know, your feet have to get better. And uh, Jacob's feet, have been very, he's, he's always been a good shot stopper. He wouldn't be a goalkeeper. You All can right. see a natural. Yeah, yeah. Just... Some medical attention may be required here on the number eight, Yimi Turayanen. The referee, Kirsty Dow, just comes on. Instructs the medical staff to just come on. Of he, course, being very... He, he was the Chelsea player early doors, who, who, you know, who I thought was catching the eye. But I think Ronnie has been, you know, everything that they've done that's done well, Ronnie Stout has been... Probably not, not just because he scored the goal, I'm not as shallow as that, but he, you know, he, he has been an absolute threat. And most, most teams we play against, Caleb Casey sort of tends to have the better of, the, of their forwards today. Ronnie's giving him not a run around, but he's giving him a, you know, a tough encounter. It's funny because they know each other really well. How long did you work with Ronnie Stutter for, Mark? Well, I was probably, I'd have been the under-18s coach then, but when you're the under-18s coach, you still go down and do a night with the academy, so he might come in with the 13s, 14s, Caelan was there and George was there, and I'd do a like, one night a week with them sort of thing. So, so yeah, for, for a couple of years, I, I would have done, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't have been their actual coach of this team he played for. I'd do a bit of work with him at the academy of an evening. I was, I, mean, I was the under-18s coach for 10 years. Here come Chelsea, looking for a second through Castledine, taking it to the byline. Safe hands from Knightbridge once again. Considering the slippery surface, he kept that one. Here come West Ham with a nice passenger play out to that left-hand side. Swire with his first real go with the ball since he made way for... came on for Divin Mubama. Here's Orford. Kelly lurking outside the area, but it'll come to Robinson to the right. He carries on his run, but Kelly will strike it over the woodwork, never troubling the goalkeeper. As you asked me earlier about PK, and that's just a part of his game that he has to get better at. He's always, he's always a very... How are you finding uh, pronouncing the name Swire? It's quite an awkward one, isn't it? Swire. Yes. <laughs> Sometimes I'll say Swire, the next Swire, without 
without realising it's, it's Swire. It is Swire, but Swire. <laughs> but I'm not. I'm not with good at why. I'm not good at pronouncing anyone. I'm just, just sort of like smirking to me still. But you're, 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 you're struggle to pronounce his name. It's an awkward one. I, I probably I did struggle a couple of weeks ago, but Swire <laughs> is the man. Is the name? Is the pronunciation? I'll just call him. Thanks for pointing that out. You're a great coach. You should be a speech coach as well as a football coach. As someone who, who, who can't talk properly, I don't think that'd be my vocation in life. I'll just call him Cam and we get away with it. That OK, way. yeah, you can call him Cam. I have to be a little bit more professional. <laughs> so uh, you go off the first name basis uh, as you're their pal. Here comes Stutter taking it into the number 11, David Washington, and it's a penalty, Mark. It was a good bit of play. I think it was Knightbridge that brought down it was Washington on, on first and first viewing. I think it was a penalty. Again, it was Ronnie Stutter who made it happen. Yes, got there in front of Jacob. Jacob got anything on the ball? Because the ball sort of goes in a funny direction. There's Ronnie playing the ball through. And stuff, Watch so. the ball. Watch the ball. No, they're, they're, in fairness to him, their fella plays it to the wide. And if there's any contact, that, that that is a penalty. Brilliant ball played in from Stutter. Yeah, as, as a, the second half, Ronnie Stutter has, has really, you know, he, he's been excellent. He's grabbed the game by the scruff of the neck, as one would say. Yeah, he had a... I don't think I'll be looking for him after the game with a big smirk on his face. And, uh, well, well, he's, well, no, he's not like that. He's a great lad. No, he said a, it was the money a, that can. Not, yeah, yeah. The money can obviously lure players to go elsewhere and, and be a factor. Yeah, and he... I mean, in all fairness to him, I like one of him, I'm joking. He, he's just come back from injury as well. So if it wasn't against West Ham, I'd be delighted to see him doing well. But I don't like to see anybody doing well against West Ham, be it an under 10s yes. or first team or the ladies team. I'm West Ham through and through. And if you're playing against us, unfortunately, you're not for me. Terribly biased, but that's just, that, that's just honesty for you. That's what you're here for. You're, you're a West Ham fan and a West Ham yeah, that was manager. A he, he just caught his trailing leg, I think it was. The 11 just moved the ball to the side and Jacob's come out of pace and just caught his trailing leg. It's a penalty, no argument. As biased as I am, even though I'm saying that. That's a, and that says a lot. People watching. Mark Phillips has admitted that one of the players has given away a penalty. Obviously, it is unfortunate for West Ham. Knightbridge, in all fairness, has had a brilliant game. Yes. He's, I mean, he's kept us anywhere near the game. He's kept us in it. I, th I think if... Uh, if, if the Sky directors are listening and they're going to offer me a, a really large contract to come to Sky, it wouldn't be a good idea to, you know, give me West Ham games. You know, give me Liverpool or Arsenal and games like that and I won't be biased. No, that's true. I won't be like Alan Smith, who's on Sky and is the most biased summarise I've ever heard for Arsenal. Sorry, Alan, if you're listening. No, I'm not sorry. You drive me mad. You'll just be biased on a, on a, low, on a, on a <laughs> level where it's streamed on the West Ham YouTube channel. Uh, I am biased, yeah. That's I'm biased fine. Biased. The, the way the night's gone, the way the night's gone, Jacob could very well save this. <laughs> well, if he does, that really does <laughs> cap off a brilliant night, albeit I there mean, may be no clean sheet. He well, certainly had an excellent individual performance. Mark. I, I didn't actually notice. Was he booked? Or, uh, I don't think he was booked. He's got... Oh, she's booking him now. Is she booking him now? Cut his mouth. Oh, right. From that collision, you can see... Tissue in his mouth. I thought you give a VAR sign then. Yeah, it did look like that. <laughs> I, I, yeah, it did look like that. And VAR, I was, no penalty. Is VAR at Rush Green? That would be pretty cool if so, but considering it's not at any other ground apart from those in the Premier League, you'd assume not. But here is their number 10, Leo Castledine, up against Knightbridge, who's had a brilliant game. But can Chelsea make it two? He gets a hand to it. We said he could potentially save it. It would be one of those nights. You said that, Mark. It looked like for a split second he did just that. To be fair, it was a well-taken penalty. And he got a big, strong hand to it, Jacob. Yeah, I mean, if anyone can feel aggrieved tonight, it's, it's, he's played very well, Jacob. Yeah, he has. And he's, he's a bit unfortunate there. It was a good pen, and he did get a good hand to it. It was a very good penalty. Just after it hit his palm, you thought that Knightbridge managed to keep it 1-0. But it was so powerful... It went into the roof of the net, and Chelsea are looking like winners here now. Yep, yeah, yeah, they are, and, and I think it's, it's mainly thanks to Ronnie Stato. If I'm honest, he's had a, he has had an excellent second half. Well, Swire gets us <laughs> off underway. 
And they try to play it down this right-hand side as West Ham look for an unlikely comeback at this rate. Of course, what do you make of West Ham's performance overall in this second half? We can go over the game later, but in this second half, it started so positively. I don't think we've played too bad. We've created a number. We just haven't put the ball in the back of the net. We, we've created well, and, and Ronnie stut, stut has undone us at the other end. But we all played in. Louise out. We made good opportunity. They, you have to bear in mind, they made some good blocks. Their keepers made some good saves. So they, they've defended well from Chelsea's point of view, really, when it really matters in there. And they've just, you know, they've been clinical when, it, when it's come to it. But I wouldn't say that they've outplayed us. They just, football's about putting the ball in the back of the net, and they've done it twice. Done it twice, indeed, they have. They'll be going up from 12th position as things stand, of course. In a, it's been a good couple of nights for Chelsea's academy. They beat Crystal Palace last night, 2-1 away in the Youth Cup, and uh, looks like they're going to beat us today. Two wins against London opposition for Chelsea, as Stutter just tries to flick it onto the run of Washington. Here is Louise out. He manages to just cut it away from Castle down there. Good work from the centre-back. It's sprayed out to this left-hand side as Skulls tries to go inside. The assistant referee on this near side raises his flag for an offside to just cut short any potential chance for West Ham to try and half the deficit. A bit of a strange one, actually. Their coach is shouting for offside. The linesman didn't put the flag up and the referee gave it. Well, it's going to be Frankie Runham to come on for David Washington. Let's keep. Frankie Runham, the 17-year-old, became the youngest Chelsea UEFA Youth League scorer in a goal against Dynamo Zagreb. Scored that at 15 years of age. Fairly impressive, that mark, would you say? Is he 17 years He's up? 17, but scored at 15 in the UEFA Youth League game. What's I'm your experience? Oh, well, I'm surprised he wasn't playing last night in the Youth Cup. Well, if you're that sort of age, you're in that age category. Unless he did play last night, and I didn't see the team that there was, but... He's a, if he's a first year, you think he played in the Youth Cup. That's the most prestigious tournament there is at youth football, really. And I haven't just said that because we won it last year, it just is. Very modest, Mark, as that's cut out by Casey. I didn't win the Youth Cup, the players did. <laughs> <laughs> and here is the substitute, Runham. There's two substitutions coming on. Ollie Harrison has come on to join in on the action late on here. As we're into the 91st minute, I didn't see stoppage time added on. No, 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 that's no. what the clock is saying. You would imagine it would be at least three minutes. But can yeah. Chelsea make it three in the meantime? Calls for a penalty. What's your opinions on that there? I've seen them given. Their player didn't appeal too much, so maybe it wasn't. But my initial thought was it could have been. Orford out to Robinson. So just the one substitution made for your side, Mark. Would you say you needed any other substitutions to come on? Obviously, you had Sean Tarima, Josh Briggs and Dan Rigg to try and make a difference. With Sean Tarima and uh, and uh, Briggs are, def are, are, are central defenders or holding midfield players, Dan Riggs is an attacking midfielder. And when you're looking for a goal, you wouldn't be bringing the first two on, really. Yeah, I mean, I mean, but it's their first sort of. They haven't played for the 21s yet. They're under 18s players, so he could he could have put them in. I mean, it's not the reason that that we've been beat, but you've got to bear in mind, you know, Callum Marshall's out on loan at West Bromwich Albion. Good delivery. Of course. Callum Marshall's out on loan at West Bromwich Albion. Uh, Dan Chester's is out on loan at, at, at Salford. Uh, Keenan Foss has been out on loan at Dag Dagnum. All year, and, and and that's what it's about. I mean, although we want to win games, of course you want to win games at 21s. What it's about is giving t under 21s players first team experience, so they can come back and get somewhere in and around the first team. That's what it's all about. So we, we have sin in, since the January window weakened the 21s side. That's not the purpose of weakening. It's, it's the purpose to get of first team. It, getting first first team action, first team experience, training with other first teams, and come back and be knocking on. Not literally knocking on David Moyes' door, but you know, getting in and around the first team. That's what we're here for, really. Well, that is the end of the action for X Hammer and first goal scorer of the evening. Ronnie Stutter coming off for Duquan Richards, the 18-year-old. 
as he makes way for the final moments of the game. Just briefly before then as well, there was a yellow card offered to Sean Moore after his challenge on the man that just went off, Ronnie Stutter. A cheeky grin from Stutter when he looked at Moore. Of course, both teammates with each other at one stage, Mark. No, he wouldn't know, he wouldn't know uh, Sean from a bar of soap because Sean only joined us this year and when he was there years ago, so he doesn't know. Sorry, Thank you for confirming that for me. <laughs> you win some, you lose some with your research. So uh, here I'm, we go. I'm sorry that I should have given you the nudge and say no, he doesn't know him from Adam, but, but he doesn't know him from Adam. Sean more impressed you since he's joined the club then? Very much so. He, 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 if, if I'm perfectly honest, which I always am, and people don't like me being honest, he, uh, when we first signed him, I was sort of the first couple of weeks, that, why have we signed him a little bit? But no, he's got better and better. As the week's gone, and he's, he's he hasn't shown it tonight. But he's, at the moment, he's top of his form. Scored a goal in the last game against Stoke, and he's he's, he's he's been really playing well. It was a good goal as well. Yeah, with his with his right into the roof of the net. I didn't know he had a right foot. If I'm honest, I've never seen him use it in my life. It was weaker foot. <laughs> I mean, I was obviously in the dugout that night, and I thought he must have caught with a deflection, but he didn't. He went in like straight to like an hour. Of course, he's had two opportunities tonight. You didn't know he had a right foot. He had two opportunities with his head to try and find the back of the net for West Ham this evening. Just couldn't quite find the target. West Ham with a late surge forward here, but Robinson just unable to keep that under his spell. And the number four, Dylan Williams, manages to get the better as the substitute Richards comes on down this left-hand side, running in field, takes it round to his left, strikes it with his left, another good save from Knightbridge and cleared away. I've noticed that by Knight Knightbridge as well, almost made the mistake of Knightsbridge. <laughs> when he's made the saves, his players have been around yes. to clear it away. It's yes. not like Chelsea have managed to get that yeah. follow-up. No, no, he, he sort of saved it, and if you want a strange thing to say, he saved it into the right areas, he really has. Certainly. Chelsea just showing their energy levels at this point, just managing to win those second balls, it feels like. Even there, Chelsea are at their most dangerous on the transition. On the transition, when, when we lose possession and they come at us when we're open, that's when they're dangerous. That's a foul, by the way. Arthur gets the foul from Williams. They take it quickly. Earthy out to Robinson. Tries to put in a ball low, comes off G. Actually, it must have ricocheted yeah, they off Robinson. I'm quite impressed with our attitude at 2-0. We could have thrown the towel in. and We're still probing, we're still asking questions. I mean, the game's lost, really, but sometimes you see things in players, you know, when things are not going well for you as well, you know what I mean? When the chips are down, a manager or a coach, if there's any, I say, first-team staff looking at that, thinking, well, he kept trying, he kept going. So, 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 so there's always things to learn from, from looking at games and looking at players. Absolutely, and it's testament to how good of a season you've had, Mark. The fact that this is your first defeat since the opening day against Arsenal. Yeah, and, and, and again, I think, as, as, we, as we spoke about earlier, we haven't, it's not one where, you know, we've been absolutely played off the park. They, they've won the game fair and square, not to say they haven't, but it, it's, it could have gone either way on various occasions. Game of chances, and Chelsea have taken theirs. Here's one for a third, but Sturge just plays it safe, but a lovely back kill into the path of substitute Runham. The referee blows her whistle. We played seven minutes of stoppage time. Your prediction of it going to the 98 minute yeah. is almost <laughs> well, well, right. I, I don't watch many games these days that don't seem to go to 98, especially when there's a lot of substitution. I mean, it seems to go to, you know, to, to that sort of figure of time, doesn't it? I suppose there were a couple of injuries. I know that Yimi Turanian went down a couple of times and had to be looked at. But once again, West Ham coming forward. Swaya laying it off nicely. Now it finds itself out to the right-hand side. Robinson up against Sturge. Now Earthy up against G. Once again, G has been brilliant in that back line for Chelsea. Yeah, he has. He has. He's marshaled everything well, yeah. The captain. Been there for every block. And they, certainly helped out they, as goalkeeper. They've made some very, not, not just in person, they've made some good blocks, actually, Chelsea. Back out to Earthy. <laughs> Nasty Dow blows her whistle for a late free kick here. I'm thinking that's the end of the game. So yeah, <laughs> every time she blows her whistle, it feels like it could be the final whistle. It, I no mean, added I, on I time. Mean, 
Chelsea, you said that they're 12th in the league and we were second. Those places have obviously changed. I don't know if you know how the 21 league works this year. You go to the top 16 go into a playoff. So we, these could be one of the teams that we face, you know, in, in the playoff at the, at the end of the season. Delivery from Skulls with his left foot, but headed away by Castledine. The score of the penalty for the second goal, and it goes all the way back to Clayton. And that is the full-time whistle mark as West Ham end up being on the wrong end of the scoreline, but it was two good goals, especially the first from Ronnie Stutter, the ex-hammer, who opened up the scoring. And then it was Leo Castledine to slot home a penalty. It had some power on it. It looked like for a minute that Knightbridge had got to it and saved it, but instead it hit the roof of the net and put Chelsea two goals up to nil. Overall, Mark, a tale of 90 minutes. What was your story on it? I think Ronnie Stutter was probably the best player on the pitch, closely followed by Jacob Knightbridge. I said it right then, so you've, educa well you've educated me. So it, but it, it, it was a good competitive game, a good advert for, for 21's football in horrendous conditions. And and look, we, we, we shouldn't be too too despondent. It's, a, it's about winning and losing and learning and going on from there. And, you know, getting yourself in and around the first team, that's what it's all about. We obviously don't set out before the game to lose the game. We obviously just try not to, but... It's all about developing and learning from there. Absolutely. So it's not all doom and gloom. And like we said, West Ham didn't give up. They kept on going. They showed some fight to keep on and try and find the goal, even though the scoreline wasn't in their favour. They walk off their first defeat since this first game of the season against another London side, of course. Finished here two goals to nil to the side from West London. We'll just go over the goals. Mark, this is the first one. Rakzaki feeding for a lovely ball to Ronnie Stutter. The ball was great and so was the, the finish. I mean, I mean, I mean, he chopped and turned and he had Caleb going one way, then the other, and had him off balance. I mean, that, that's good forward play from Ronnie Stutter, to be fair. You know, another good pass from, from Ronnie. And, Jacob S had to come out quick, made his mind up, and I've got no argument, definite penalty, without a doubt. Just Jacob was a bit unlucky with the actual penalty. A good strong hand to it, nearly got it onto the bar. Just not quite. quite. Couldn't quite keep it out, but it was Ronnie Stutter, the man of the match, you'd say, the player of the match? Yes, definitely. Yeah, but, but that's, Ronnie Stutter was the man of the match. Scored one, made one, it was a constant threat. Yeah, that's, that, that's how he dreamed it last night, coming back to West Ham and doing that to us. Great forward play. And great midfield play, it seemed like, as well, when he managed to pick the ball up from deep and lay off a brilliant pass to David Washington. So, thank you very much, everyone, for listening. You have been joined by myself and the legendary Mark Phillips in tonight's evening gate or tonight's fixture between West Ham and Chelsea. It finishes here at Rush Green, West Ham nil, Chelsea two. I've just, just done that for hour and a half. Yeah. <laughs>